Hey everybody, I've been super happy with the responses so far to the first few videos of my Christian case against Donald Trump. I appreciate all of you who've liked the videos, who've subscribed to the channel, people who've told me that they are sharing these videos with friends. I mean, that's all just super important for getting the word out. You probably know that each of these videos is just a rough draft of my thoughts as I go along. But I'm learning so much by interacting with you in the comments, by uh, recommendations of books that you've given me, ways that you think I can sharpen my arguments, you know, push back on this argument. You know, it's all so helpful. And so if I do end up putting this into a book form later on this summer, which I'm leaning more and more towards doing, it's going to be so much better for having gone through this like public writing process here. So thank you so much for being part of it. Now today, I'm ending the first chapter. And this first chapter has been about authoritarianism and how I use it as a lens for understanding Trump and his followers. And my working title for the chapter has been The Authoritarian Playbook. But I didn't make up that phrase. It's one that gets used quite a bit by people who study this stuff. And it's also the name of the best resource that I can share with you right now about the authoritarian threat that I've been talking about. I'm going to post a link below to the Authoritarian Playbook 2025. I'm not pretending to be an expert on these issues. My main interest is to help Christians to not get used by authoritarians like Donald Trump. But if you want a broader understanding of how all this works, I just highly recommend starting with that link to the Authoritarian Playbook 2025. It's, it's put out by a group called Protect Democracy. You might have seen a video that I made a few days ago where I played a two-minute clip of Ian Basson talking about authoritarian bullies. He's a co-founder and executive director of Protect Democracy. So he's one of the main people behind this Authoritarian Playbook 2025 project. Now, as for me and my project, in the coming weeks, I'll be building on Chapter 1 by releasing chapters that deal specifically with some key aspects of the dangers that Trump poses to the nation and to Christians, sort of like a chapter per issue. For instance, I'll be writing a chapter, which is a series of videos, on Trump's false gospel of American greatness. And I'll do another chapter, another series of videos, on how Trump and his supporters are normalizing violence as a political tool. I'll do a chapter on Trump's sexual transgressions. And I'll talk in there, as disturbing as it is, about how these aren't mainly about a guy cheating on his wives. They're... His sexual transgressions represent a desire for dominance and control that other authoritarians have shown over the years. I'll be doing several other chapters as well on issues like immigration and crime and, and other issues where Trump's rhetoric and his actions are explicitly anti-Christian when you get down to it. So you'll find, I think, that my Christian case against Trump isn't primarily me pointing out that Trump isn't a Christian. I, I don't expect our politicians to be Christians. What I'm opposed to is politicians using Christians toward dark and dangerous ends and distorting the Christian message to gain votes. And that's Donald Trump all the way. So for instance, the very next chapter I'm going to do starting tomorrow is going to be a series of videos on Trump's lies his relentless attacks on the truth. And here's where I hope that I can make a significant contribution to the way that Christians think about this stuff. My main message about lying isn't going to be Trump's a bad guy because he's told a few lies. I mean, Trump has told exponentially more lies than any candidate in my lifetime. But that's not the main point Christians need to know about the lies. This has nothing to do with like this inane comment I hear time and again where people say, I'm not voting for a pastor, I'm voting for a president. I mean, that sort of talk is just dismissive and it's silly. A lot of Christians need to grow up, frankly, and start talking about real things 
and stop ignoring or dismissing the attacks Donald Trump is waging against the conscience of his Christian followers. My message about lying isn't going to be simply, Donald Trump has lied a lot, so he's got a bad character. I mean, don't we know Donald Trump has a bad character? Does anyone really need me to tell them that? I expect, I just expect that anyone who calls himself a Christian is going to be able to watch even one Donald Trump speech, for instance, with no outside commentary and just recognize his deformity of character on display like all over the place. I mean, honestly, if you can watch a Donald Trump speech and not conclude that on a human level, this is a tortured and twisted soul, then you're probably not my audience. I mean, I'm making these videos for people who can look at Trump and know who he is, but still think that they ought to vote for him because they somehow believe that that's what Christians ought to do. I mean, that's who I'm talking to. So about the lying, I mean, I'll be showing in this next set of videos that Trump isn't just lying. He's attacking the very concept of truth. And that's an old playbook for authoritarians. It's not that Trump decided to run for president, so then he decided to start telling lies. It's more that Trump has been a liar from the beginning. The evidence of his lies runs throughout his entire life. And that just makes him an ideal authoritarian. This type of leader overwhelms his followers with a blizzard of falsehoods. It's an intentional strategy to keep his followers off balance. So in the end, they start to believe that truth isn't even knowable. So instead of clinging to truth, like Christians are supposed to do, they begin to cling to him. And once you convince people that truth doesn't exist, then you can rule them through naked power. And this is just crucial for Christians to understand for two reasons. First, because Trump is using Christians to pull off these strategies. We just can't be complicit in electing a guy who's trying to bury the nation under a blizzard of lies. But second, I can't think of anything less Christian than to participate in the absolute destruction of truth. The theme of truth versus lies runs all through the scriptures. And this isn't a close call. The Bible is on the side of truth. Jesus is on the side of truth. It's hard to imagine anything more damaging to the Christian conscience than to choose a side that's built on lies. I think most Trump voters, at least the, the ones that I'm trying to reach, know that what I'm saying about him is true. They know that he's been a liar from the beginning, and he's built a movement that's founded on, like, a, using this blizzard of lies analogy, a filthy snowbank of lies, the Minnesota analogy. We all know this. We, we see this with our own eyes. And it's inexcusable to throw in our lot with someone like that, no matter what he promises. And after all, what are the promises of a liar worth anyway? But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll be unpacking all of this in chapter two, starting tomorrow. So thanks for listening.